Hello, my name is Corey McBoy and I'm a senior engineer at DNA Technologies. I wanted to make a video on GraphQL Nexus just because there hasn't been a lot of content on it thus far because it's a relatively new technology. GraphQL Nexus is a next generation GraphQL framework that allows you to take a code first approach towards GraphQL development. Um, in this video, what we're going to do is we're going to do an overview and then after that, it's going to be a series of tutorial videos that show how you go about using it in a sample implementation. So without further ado, let's get started. So but, uh, before we really dive in, just a primer on what GraphQL is in general. Uh, GraphQL is a REST API alternative. So traditionally with REST APIs, you deliver up several endpoints that your different clients will connect to to uh, read, create, update, or delete data. Um, this is very cumbersome because you'll have several endpoints throughout your application and your clients usually have to work around whatever's delivered in each endpoint. So it can be a very inefficient way to go about development. And the same thing happens on the server side when you have all these different microservices that you depend on. Um, there's a lot of complication in how you interact um, with each of your endpoints. GraphQL, on the other hand, simplifies the entire approach. Rather than having several endpoints that you connect to, you just connect to one endpoint, and then you tell that endpoint what information you need. Um, so it's a very declarative approach, and it really reduces the complexity on client-side development. So now that we got that under the way, let's move on, and let's just touch on what Prisma is. Prisma is an object relational mapping, or otherwise known as an ORM, with a strong focus on GraphQL support. Um, so for those of you who don't know what an ORM is, it is an abstraction layer around databases. So traditionally, if you did not use an ORM, as a developer, you would have to write your code to connect directly to a database and manually provide the query that you would want to execute on your database. Um, this is a very error-prone approach. On the flip side, after the query would be returned, you then have to parse out the data, which um, can lead to null pointer exceptions and other really common runtime errors, which is very, very annoying. And ORM encapsulates that in complexity by taking um, whatever you want from, a, from your code, uh, mutating it into a query, and then executing it across the database, it then parses the results and turns it to you in a very type-safe approach. Prisma is one of these ORMs, and it's a very declarative um, API. So here's an example up above. Let's say you want to do a query for all users. In your code, you would just simply call Prisma dot and then whatever query you're going to run, such as users. And then it returns a user object that you basically already have defined. So you can safely use those types to extract all the information from your list of users. This is a very, very efficient way to go about interacting with uh, database code. Um, okay, so now that we've got all that background information out of the way, it's now time to introduce GraphQL Nexus. GraphQL Nexus is created by Prisma, the same company that makes the ORM, and they're just introducing a code-first approach to GraphQL development. I'm going to dive into this a little bit more in detail, but for right now, typically when you create a GraphQL server, you have to go out and lay out a schema that defines how your GraphQL server will operate. Then after that's done, you'll create resolvers that is essentially the code that operates on the schema that you define. Um, so that's called a schema-first approach. A code-first approach is where you, like over here on the right, is basically you're um, defining your schema within the code. So in this example, they have a user, and they're essentially um, they're, they're defining a field called ID of type int, and this is all in code. And I'll show, I'll dive into a little more detail in the next few slides um, to give you a better understanding. GraphQL Nexus is also a strongly typed framework providing great IntelliSense linting, error detection, and much more. Um, this is something that is um, not, I mean, there are some support for it in the current frameworks, but it's not really strong enough to where it needs to be, and GraphQL Nexus really solves this problem. 
Okay, so now we're gonna dive a little bit deeper into the schema first approach versus code first approach. Most GraphQL frameworks today operate in a schema first GraphQL approach. Um, and this is essentially where there's two steps to creating your GraphQL server. The first one is you create a GraphQL schema. So you'll go out and you'll manually define all the queries that you want to have and mutations and types. And then after you do that, you would then create resolvers that essentially is the code underneath the schema. So in this example I have over to the right, um, I've got a find reviews query that takes in a user ID of type ID and it returns an array of reviews. Um, and then I basically have this resolver here where I have the find review de um, basically defined and it takes in a user ID um, and then it will return a array of reviews. So I've got the code defined up here in the schema and then I actually have the real code down here. Um, obviously in this situation the schema and resolvers are separate and they interact with each other but the bad part about this approach is there's limited there's limited support for linting and error detection, um, or I guess I should say co-time error detection when you're defining your schema. So as you can tell, this is just a template string. So if I were to have like a typo in here, there'd be no detection until runtime um, that would tell me whether there was something wrong. In addition, you have to type something. Um, anytime you want to do an update, you've got to type something in the uh, schema and the resolver. This is sort of duplicating work. So um, both of these things create motivation for a code first approach. And this is what GraphQL Nexus does. Um, instead of having the schema and resolver separate, they're basically combined to the same component. Um, so more or less, you can think of it as the schema is defined in the resolvers. So here's a snippet from GraphQL Nexus, and this can give you an illustration of essentially what is going on. Um, so here I've got a mutation defined. A mutation is like um, like you're updating some piece of data uh, in GraphQL. I've got a thing called sign up user, and it's of type user, which um, which is something that it would be another Nexus definition that we would create. And we create two arguments. Um, one is the name, and the other one is the email. And we use these Nexus functions that essentially define the type. So right here, you can tell that basically our schema is being, being defined right here in the code. And this is excellent because it provides linting support and error detection um, right here in the code. Um, there's also some autocomplete features as well. So um, for instance, in this resolve function, and I will show you it in the tutorial, in the resolve function, um, I'm extracting out the args right here. Um, if I were to just um, put my cursor right here, it would um, give me IntelliSense to tell me that name and email are available um, right here as arguments. Um, so this is really, really great support from a code first perspective. <clears throat> um, there's another plugin that that is a huge value add in your GraphQL development lifecycle. It's called the Prisma Nexus plugin. And it, it goes um, past Nexus and it does the auto generation of queries, mutations, and subscriptions, and all CRUD data associated with your um, GraphQL model. It also provides pagination, filtering, and sorting support right out of the box, which both of these two points, this saves a lot of time. In my personal um, workflow, this saves about two weeks of time um, just using this Prism Nexus plugin. Um, the only caveat is you must create a base data model um, first, which sort of goes against the code first paradigm, but the amount of benefit that it provides great out, greatly outweighs the, um, the burden of just creating a, a, a base data model. And, and this base data model is just your types, so like, the, like the user type and post and stuff like that. It doesn't involve like queries, mutations, and subscriptions. All that's handled by uh, Prisma Nexus. The way this works is you simply define your Prisma data model, so like you know users and employees and stuff, um, and their types using standard SDL syntax, and then you run this Prisma or Nexus Prisma generate, and this will automatically create all your um, update, delete, and read statements, all your CRUD statements right out of the box. 
And then from there, you'll actually use GraphQL Nexus to make any sort of alterations from the standard CRUD functionality that was created. So if you have any like computed variables or anything that you want to admit um, from your GraphQL API or anything like one-off, you would just do that in Nexus at that point. And then at that point, your um, GraphQL server is created. So it's a really great way to go about doing GraphQL development uh, and it saves a lot of time and reduces a lot of errors. Okay, so now that we've got the presentation out of the way, it's now time to dive into a tutorial. Um, so we're gonna do a demo of this. Um, before we really dive into the demo, I just wanna give a shout out um, to these, uh, these blogs that Prisma did. Um, they, they released a series of three blogs. Um, I believe Nick, Nicholas Burke, he's a developer advocate for uh, Prisma. He wrote these great articles on essentially a lot of the stuff that I covered, the, um, what, the problems with schema first, and then how Nexus solves this problem. Um, so if you have some time, I would highly recommend checking out these three articles. Um, I'll put a link to it in the description. That's going to be all for this video. In the next video, we'll go ahead and dive into the tutorial, and we'll use GraphQL Nexus firsthand. See you then.